Hi guys, how are you? Good? Yeah? Should we start pressing? Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, hi. So, since this is a TED talk, it's pretty, I don't know, pretty rational. Let's, let's talk, okay? Humans have had this habit of getting desensitized to a lot of things, and it happens way too often nowadays. What is desensitization? It's basically just getting used to things. For example, oh, 20,000 lives gone. <laughs> Big deal. War here, war there, war everywhere. <laughs> sure. Oh, let's have a pumpkin for president. So yesterday. <laughs> Desensitization occurs when people see these flashing images so much that they don't get surprised anymore. There's no big hype, there's no big deal. It's just there. And so that then causes people having to tell other people, show them the intricate detail for them to understand that there is a bigger picture. So let's get into the microscope. In my case, social media is my little job. It's my little job because I don't fully depend on it for financial support, but it does give me a cheese fatire for lunch. It's pretty cool. And it's always been cool, ever since I started. If we talk about the job aspects to it, I have a YouTube channel, I have a blog, and I used to even host a podcast show, but that's over now. Um, the fact that I'm 14 years old sometimes surprises me. Oh yeah, I'm 14. Just like any... <laughs> just like any teenager in the 21st century, it's not surprising to say that I just use social media for fun. I mean, there's no harm in wanting to tell my friends what I'm up to at 4 p.m. on a Saturday. And so, with the fact that I am a regular teenager, I have to satisfy those needs, which can be a lot. And I have to satisfy my little businesswoman needs. And together, they result with a very great concern for numbers. I woke up one day, looked back at the bad week I just had, and I realized that numbers are taking the best of me. Likes, views, and comments, all I ask for is a big number. All you ask for is a big number. And what is that big number going to do to us? It's going to give us satisfaction. It's going to replace our actual worth just for a few days, and it'll tell us that we're worth watching or listening to. How come we think of it like that? How come we've warped our heads into thinking that that's what's right? And that's the thing. We don't even think about this at all. We are desensitized. Ooh. This is the 1820s. The 1820s was when the social numeric system started to snowball. Ever since then, there has been this growing impulse to understand people more with numbers. We had to use statistics. People were given figures as their names. And a very, uh, a very known and award-winning sociologist called Theodore Porter actually called this the trust in numbers. <sighs> wow. Now, do we really trust numbers that much? I mean, let's say 15,120 hours are taken out of our lives, is then spent in an institution that claims to educate educate us about what we need to know for the test. We're then given a score, which is another number, but that's not the only test we're going to take. There's about five, six, or 10. Then we end up with a huge chunk of numbers that we have to trust. We have to trust those numbers and that they will take us to the next four walls we deserve to be in. The next 15,100 and, oh, 20 hours we deserve to be in. Singapore holds the largest percentage of stressed students. Through several surveys, they have concluded that one out of three students in the country suffer through mental illnesses and stress. And unfortunately, this has led to other things. And what is the reason for this? Numbers. We're so drawn to the idea of a better number that we forget about the idea of a better person. A better person who wouldn't settle for satisfaction, 
to feed on forever and would strive to do a number of ventures rather than a number of viewers. Maybe that's the test. Maybe the test is, the objective is that we should avoid the system. And if we do, we win. But how have we been failing all this time? Money. This is what the big kids look at. You see, numbers don't stop haunting you when you graduate high school or college. It constantly follows you. Our world has, pro has pro proved it to itself that this system does exist and it's not another blogger's theory. This is not another YouTube video. I'm not trying to rant to you. This is something that we should be aware about. Money. Something we're all going to be going through some point of our lives. You see, your social status depends on how you treat the bank. So what if you have a brilliant story to tell if you're still saving up for your car? So what if you're a great person to talk to? Don't shop in the generic markets. You can't win with just who you are, society whispered. But just because you can't win at everything does not mean you can't win at anything. And something you can win is you. Really cliche, I know. But you must understand who you are, what you want, and where you want to go. Reaching a level of self-validation is so astonishing, so marvelous, that you cannot measure it with one, two, or three. Once you find an escape system, cherish it, nurture it, use it. Because then you will further strengthen what the youth stands for. And it is to live loud. Another cliche. But it is. It's the truth. We are an icon. And our icon represents limitless aspirations, creativity, and optimism. Do not let a number hold you back. Because you are not a number. You are you. The chances of me... <laughs> The chances of me to ever stand on this stage could have been calculated to one out of a thousand. But yet I'm here, and that's because I am the youth, and you are too. My purpose is to not convince you that the CIA made up mathematics, which is still kind of possible, <laughs> or that your blood pressure is a myth, or that your grades don't matter anymore. My purpose is to bring awareness, bring awareness to how our society has utilized these numbers, how we've grown, how we've developed a misconception between worth and self-worth. There is a huge difference because you're not a number. You are not a figure, you're not a statistic. You're you and you are your name. Live up with that. <laughs> this self-awareness, uh, this awareness is brought to you by me to the youth specifically because we, we hold whatever the future holds. We are the future. This world, this is going to be ours in a few years, maybe a few months, weeks, days, or right now. So we must be aware of what's going on. We can't keep on living in this little intricate, in this little intricate detail. We have to focus on what is the bigger picture. But we have to understand what makes up the bigger picture. You, as an individual, you're an intricate detail, but together we are a bigger picture. And maybe one voice can only change this room. But it's certain that 101 voices could probably change everything. And I'll leave you with this. Soar higher and never soar high enough. Thank you. <laughs>